Philippians chapter 4, the Apostle Paul writes maybe the section of this letter that is most impactful to me personally. Uh, certainly he is inspired by the Holy Spirit. And he is, he is so, so effective in explaining what it means to live the life of Christ. I mean, what we must aspire to, to do and to live. He talks about an unshakable life. Chapter 4, verse 6, he writes, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there's any praise, anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the peace of God will be with you. Now this passage, it explains itself um, and it's so powerful and so touching because he speaks about a life that is not affected by anxiety. In, in this age where anxiety is so prominent, so present in our day-to-day -day lives, we receive instruction from, from, from the Holy Spirit on how to not allow anxiety to infiltrate our hearts because anxiety is something we can avoid. We need to avoid because anxiety, it, it, it messes with our, not only our emotional equilibrium, but also our spiritual equilibrium because anxiety is the result of, of somebody who doesn't quite doesn't quite have their trust completely in the Lord. He says, be anxious for nothing. And the way for us to do that is in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, letting our requests be made known to God. So a consistent prayer life and the life of thanksgiving really impacts the way that we manage our anxiety. So uh, Paul is speaking certainly about a consistent prayer life we, which we ought to strive to have. And the Apostle Paul is speaking about not only a consistent prayer life, but a life of thanksgiving. If you, if you can find things, if you can consistently find things to be thankful for, to be grateful for, you will find less and less things to complain about. You will find less and less things to be anxious about. So what does it mean to live a life of prayer and a life of thanksgiving? It means to devoting time in the presence of God, allowing your thoughts to be captive by Him, for Him to hold your thoughts captive, and also for you to make the, 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 your interactions with God and His, his interventions in, his, in your life to make those events memorable. Remind yourself of them. Make, make uh, uh, little things in your own home, in your own house that brings you back to moments where God showed himself true to you. And you will live a life of, of consistent prayer and thanksgiving. And that helps us prevent anxiety from infiltrating our hearts. And when we're not controlled by anxiety, our lives are lived in a way that the purpose of the gospel is not affected in us. Because when we're anxious, anxiety affects our emotions, it affects our equilibrium, it, affect, it affects our spiritual walk, it affects our purpose and the calling that God has called us to fulfill. And he, verses 8 and 9 is just a masterpiece of, of, of explaining what Christian living is. What truly means living the life of Christ. He says, in order for you to live an unshakable life, you need to occupy your mind. You occupy your mind with the correct things, meditating on the right things, 
don't allow improper things to hold real estate in your mind. He says, brethren, whatever things are true and noble, just, pure, uh, lovely, of good report, and if uh, there's any virtue or anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. These eight characteristics are, uh, uh, they, they, they make up what is supposed to, 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 to occupy the mind of the believer. We are not to allow anything that doesn't fit into one of these characteristics to occupy our minds. He says, meditate on this. Let your mind be occupied with the things that bring you to a place of confidence in the Lord and edification. And what are these? He says, whatever things are true. Come on, truth, truth is, is, is the substance of it all. It's the foundation on which our world must be built. And I believe that, that it's, it's partially the reason why the devil is investing so much, especially in our age, against absolute truths. You know, in postmodern culture nowadays, nothing is absolute any longer. Not even, uh, not even the basic aspects of life and biology, not even those things are true anymore. Not even those things are absolute anymore. And we are, we are slowly falling away from, from, from this place where we hold uh, self-evident truths. Because the devil knows that if you occupy your mind with what is not true, you will be volatile. You will be, you will be, uh, you, you will be, you will be inconsistent in your emotions and your thoughts double-minded, such as James said, like we mentioned yesterday. So whatever things are true, and here is not only talking about our commitment to truth as we communicate with others. In other words, we should not, uh, we should be committed to truth. We should be committed to telling the truth. And we should not allow lies to occupy our thoughts. But he's also talking about the lies that the devil tries to tell us. Don't allow yourself to be preoccupied with statements and, 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 um, and attempts of the enemy to bring about and to establish lies in your life as if they were truths. It was exactly how he corrupted Eve. In a place of perfection, he corrupted Eve by sowing a seed of a lie in her heart. And she started to occupy her mind with the lie rather than the truth of what God had told her. So whatever is true, occupy your mind. Meditate on that. Whatever is honest and just, that is so powerful. In, 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 in the New King James Version, he says, whatever things are noble and whatever things are just. And I think this, this here talks about being worthy of respect and righteous. There's so many things that are not respectable. There's so many things that doesn't bring about the feeling of righteousness according to the teachings of, of the Lord. And, and obviously we, we, shouldn't, we shouldn't hide away from unpleasant things or displeasing things, but it does mean that we are not to focus our attention on those things. We should focus our attention on what is honorable and focus our attention and permit ourselves to not be controlled by dishonorable thoughts and unjust thoughts, unrighteous thoughts. He speaks about whatever is pure, lovely, and of good report. And I think it's obvious to me that purity speaks about moral purity. You know, in postmodern culture, there's this, this, this tendency of, of not adhering to any morality. You know, the morality is a fictitious uh, construct. And, 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 but in fact, there is moral purity. And we ought to occupy our minds with whatever things are pure according to the standard of God. And we can't shy away from this message. The Apostle Paul himself says that I, I'm, not, I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God to salvation. 
I can't be ashamed of, of not only reminding myself, but also reminding the people around me that whenever there is a lack of purity in, in a situation or any given thing, I choose not to occupy my thoughts and meditate on those things. I desire to occupy my mind with whatever things are pure. And that's powerful because the, the, the Bible says that whatever a man, uh, a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So what, what we feed ourselves with, what we feed our minds with, what we feed our lives with, we will eventually become that. We will eventually show the, 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 characteris the characteristics of what we've been feeding ourselves with. And if you've been feeding yourself with impurities, it's inevitable that you will begin to show a toxicity to your personality and your character and your speech and your plans and your thoughts and the way you interact with your husband, your wife, your children, your parents, your friends and your co-workers. The purity is a must in the life of a believer, of a disciple of Christ. So whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report. That is so powerful. The Apostle Paul uh, talks about being lovely and of good report. I think lovely here just means attractive, beautiful, just means uh, uh, worthy uh, uh, um, and, and of, of good report here means it's, it's worth talking about it. It just means overall pleasant. You know, the, are, are the things that we are involved with pleasant? And that affects not only, it's not only a matter of mood, but it's also a matter of, of, of manifest kingdom culture, heavenly culture in everything we do or talk about. I hope this is blessing you. And he keeps on going. He says, if there is any virtue and if there is any pra anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Virtue and praiseworthy will motivate us to do better, to, to be committed to excellence. And that's what I believe virtue means. And, if, it, it, and, and by praise, it means not only um, commending others and praising what is, what is good in the lives of other people, but also things that bring praise to Jesus. My question for you is, is your mind being occupied by things that hold one of these eight characteristics? Whatever, whatever things, whatever things are true, noble, just, pure, lovely, of good report, if there's any virtue, anything praiseworthy. If you want to know what living the life of Christ means, what living an unshakable life looks like, this is it. A life that is insulated against anxiety because of a consistent prayer life, and a life where thanksgiving takes place of complaining. And that way it brings us to a place where we experience the peace that surpasses understanding. I believe it was Bill Johnson that once said in one of his sermons that if you want to experience the peace that surpasses understanding, you have to be able to give up the right to understand everything. <laughs> and that's so true. Living the life of Christ, living an unshakable life is this. And the best way to insulate ourselves against anxiety is occupying our minds with the right things. This is heavenly culture. This is living the life of Christ. I hope this word blesses you and I hope it inspires you to live a life that is productive, fruitful, but also godly in Jesus' name.